Rising from the ashes which destroyed its former home, the San Diego Aerospace Historical Center is rapidly gaining stature as the leading center for the preservation of aviation heritage on the West Coast. This rapid rebirth has been made possible by the generosity and hard work of numerous friends, volunteers, and corporate supporters. Located in San Diego's beautiful Balboa Park, the museum's many exhibits recount the dreams of flight. From the dawn of powered aviation to current conquests of space. The San Diego Aerospace Museum is history made new and fresh again. A museum where thousands of visitors share the exhilaration of the Wright brothers and experience the daring of Lindbergh. One of those who shared firsthand the daring experience of early transcontinental flight and later greatly contributed to the museum's development was Theodore Gilbert, international businessman and San Diego aviation pioneer. It was his dream to fly from San Diego to Latin America in a single-engine Ryan Braum, similar to Lindy's. His trip promoted goodwill between nations, and his Ryan Braum became the airplane that established the first regular airmail service to the isolated cities of Ecuador. I can remember many times my father told me of the hazardous adventure to Quito, Ecuador. It began one chilly dawn, March 13, 1931, when my father and his co-pilot, Dean Farron, set off on their intercontinental flight. They used auto club maps and whatever else they could find to guide them on their rugged journey. Together, they braved bad weather an uncharted terrain using only a needle and ball indicator, altimeter, magnetic compass, and maps that even they called inaccurate and inefficient. Landing on the coast of Ecuador in inclement weather after a dangerous overwater leg, they provided novel spectacle for natives, most of whom had never seen an airplane before. After two days, the weather finally cleared somewhat, and they took off into the skies again, arriving to a tumultuous welcome in Quito, a long 18 days after their departure from San Diego. Thousands of excited Ecuadorians greeted them at a landing field cleared especially for their arrival. During a hero's welcome at the presidential office, my father was awarded a gold medal of honor by the Ecuadorian government for his historic flight. Now to rekindle the spirit of friendship established by his father's daring flight, Theodore E. Gilbert will exactly retrace the journey to Quito on its 50th anniversary, March 13, 1981. Ted and co-pilot Wally Moore will fly a vintage Stinson, christened Ecuador II after his father's plane, the Ecuador. The anniversary flight, the spirit of goodwill, seeks to foster friendship throughout Latin America by stopping in Mexico, Guatemala, Costa Rica, Nicaragua, Panama, and Ecuador, and to bring national attention and support to the San Diego Aerospace Museum. Along the way, Gildred and Moore will exchange specially minted medallions and official proclamations for Latin American aerospace memorabilia. Their takeoff will mark the final symbolic flight of Orion B-5 Brougham, thought to be the last in existence. The Brougham, a duplicate of Theodore Gildred's Ecuador, is rapidly taking shape at the museum. Talented volunteer craftsmen, many of them aerospace pioneers in their own right, are carefully restoring the old plane to its original splendor for permanent display at the museum.
as Ted Gilbert takes off from San Diego International Airport, bound for Ecuador. The Ryan Broham painted the same color and with the same markings as his father's Ecuador, will rev its engines for one final symbolic liftoff before settling back to the ground for the last time. The Ryan Broham will be retired to a prominent place among the museum's priceless exhibits. After the anniversary flight to South America, it will be joined by Ecuador II, the Stinson. Together, they will remain as monuments to continuing goodwill among nations and to the aerospace history which links the United States and its neighbors to the South. Thus, a moment in aviation history is captured forever at the San Diego Aerospace Museum. Not just a repository of memorabilia, but a caretaker of dreams.